Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. I'm your host, a humble human on a mission, here to help you achieve and receive the best hair, skin, nails of your life and both look and feel your best. In today's episode, we have a returning guest, Dr. Anna Kabeca, and we're going to be talking all about how we can really blossom into our radiance as we move through life, as we get wiser with years, and why really we want to care about the aging process, not just up here on our faces, but also down there uh, in regards to vaginal health and wellness. And we're going to be talking about the impacts of a week-long fast that both Dr. Anna Kabaka and I have experienced to inspire you and not overwhelm you, but just kind of let you know that these things are available that are totally free. And what we noticed during this experience, and also, of course, with Dr. Anna Kabeca here, how our hormones impact our radiance from the way that we move, think, speak, feel, and navigate life. Dr. Annika Becca is a DO, OBGYN, and FACOG, is a best selling author of The Hormone Fix and Keto Green 16 and Menopause. Menupause, or rather. Dr. Anna is a triple board certified and fellow of gynecology and obstetrics, integrative medicine, and anti aging and regenerative medicine. She holds a special certification in functional medicine, sexual health, and bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. She lectures frequently on these topics and shares the secrets behind the ebb and flow of intimacy as she demystifies the incredible hormonal changes that we experience over time. She will help you discover the love hormone, oxytocin, and how this can breathe life into your relationships with yourself and others, and how cortisol can take it away and really impact your skin and the degradation of different components in your body, and how the delicate balancing act of those hormones can reignite your libido and support a healthy relationship. Most importantly, the one you have with yourself. She's sassy, she's blunt, she's gorgeous, speaks from the heart, and has an incredible sense of humor. And this is why we call her the girlfriend doctor, because everyone needs a friend like her. She has personally developed natural products to help women balance hormones and thrive through menopause through the highly acclaimed Jova cream, which we're going to be talking about for the vulva and mighty maca plus a powerful superfood blend. She lives in Dallas with her daughters, horses, and dogs. And you can learn all about Dr. Anna at dranna.com forward slash radiance. And that's also where you can find some of the products that we're going to mention in today's show. Welcome, 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 Dr. Anna Kabeca. How are you today? And of course, what is radiance to you? Oh, well, thank you so much, Rachel. Thank you so much for having me on today. And, um, and I, you know, I just, your voice is mesmerizing. I'm like, oh, I'm lulled and just feel really relaxed. So I'm enjoying our conversation already. Now, radiance, what radiance means to me, I think, you know, one of the, one of the most uh, significant shifts and, uh, you know, I, I focus on menopause and the transition of menopause. I want women to celebrate menopause as a transition time in life and where it's natural and mandatory, you know, like every woman will experience it, suffering is optional. So women can lose that radiance, feel like they're not being as radiant as they as they can be or as they really, you know, deserve to be. And for me, radiance is, is health. Radiance is just being healthy. And when you show up healthy, that emits a radiance that's palpable and energetic and approachable and magnetic. So for me, radiance is health. Absolutely. And what comes from being healthy? That's kind of what everyone here is hoping to learn about. How do we be healthy? You know, really, when you mention this transition into menopause, I think it's kind of an initiation. We're going through different stages in our lives from 
growing up, getting your own place, getting married, having kids, going through menopause in there, and then the kids move out, you retire, and you get to leave this world with a lasting impact after that. So I'm curious to hear from you, what are some of your tips and strategies for supporting us all in blossoming into our radiance in the second half of life or sort of like during or after transitions or rather initiations? Yeah, and hormonal changes in perimenopause that can start and make us feel less radiant, right? And so when health is being challenged, the thing that's always so important is to get to the foundations. And for me, as a physician, the way I've approached medicine through my own journey and trauma, through caring for my mom, through her journey and trauma and her way early passing before I knew all the things that I know now, um, it's, you know, really about getting to the, the, making the smallest changes that have the biggest results. And so if we think about that in life, like we want to make the smallest changes that give us the best income or the smallest, you know, amount of cleaning up the house to make it look the best. I mean, whatever things we're going to do, right? But when it comes to physically going to the cell, to the cell membrane, like what are the smallest, how can we improve cell function and cell communication to have the best impact on health? And so that has been incorporated into my approaches in helping women balance their hormones naturally, um, whether we're using prescription hormones or not. But the most important thing is the replenishment and nourishment of our body's own endocrine organs and our own hormone functioning systems and it's it's so attainable and it's and it's really easy when it comes down to it and i know it can feel really challenging especially when the in midst of perimenopause or menopausal mayhem but again little shifts completely clear up the constellation of symptoms that are like over 50 sim symptoms that are associated with hormonal fluctuation. So it's, I just want to encourage women that are listening, especially, and men who love them, that they, this there's this um, change that we can make through improving the health of our cells that helps the health of our hormones. Mm -hmm. And this information is very important to hear, whether you're my age, and I clearly have not gone through menopause yet, you're in the thick of it, you're on the post-menopause side of things, or as a male listener, you're around a woman who's going through these shifts. The mind is going to be going through dramatic shifts because of the hormones that are changing. Some of the free things that you mentioned, like tidying your home, actually has an impact on our hormones, believe it or not. Something as simple as just keeping your home tidy. And I did some tidying up before our interview here because these are some things that I do throughout the day. I think that also just recognizing in ourselves when we're not really feeling like ourselves, we're kind of jittery, our movements are a little bit off. Maybe we're not having the highest thoughts that it's actually related to these hormone shifts. And I'd love for you to think about that because our psychological state has a direct connection with the way that we look because the skin and the brain actually come from the same cell line. I'd love for you to just walk us through here, kind of an overview of what some of the feelings and emotions and just how the body can feel the body itself during some of these shifts and, and why that might be happening. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, first off, like the natural hormone shifts, like menopause is as natural as puberty. And just like we would know, we would not want to suppress puberty in a young boy or girl, we don't want to suppress menopause in a woman. So understanding the physiologic shifts are designed for a natural rewiring process. However, with that said, there, I mean, there is this brain body connection, this brain hormonal connection. And now I'm, I'm, I'm 58 years old this year. And so 
um, you know, dating over the past decade in my 50s, meeting a lot of men who say, oh, my ex-wife was bipolar. I'm like, bipolar or hormonal? I mean, most like hormone, because hormones affect our physiology, our physiology affects our behavior. And that's really important to understand. We're not feeling at home in our body. We're not feeling at peace or centered. We're feeling irritable, angry. I had a patient in my office yesterday, and I'm probably going on a tangent, Rachel, but it was talking with her and she said, you know, Dr. Ann, I'm just angry. I'm angry for no good reason. Things that used to not bother me, irritate the heck out of me now, um, moody and, and feeling like, you know, I, I don't know what's going on with me. And this is a woman who had a hysterectomy at age 37 and she's now 42 years old. And, um, and she has one ovary. So this is like perimenopause plus biologic clock shifts and stress at this time of life. She's now homeschooling her teenage daughter. So you add in stress and you deplete your hormonal reserves and especially progesterone, which is a neuroprotective hormone. It's one of the first hormones to really significantly drop off, drop off in our mid thirties to forties. And it's neuroprotective. We need it with or without a uterus. This is one of the reasons why she was experiencing all this because her doctor didn't give her progesterone because she didn't have a uterus. It's such a big fallacy. And so she, you know, progesterone protects the brain, the bones, the breast. I mean, there's so many good benefits, but very good for the brain and mood and memory and sleep, restorative sleep. So you know, here she is experiencing all these symptoms and, you know, really unnecessarily unnecessarily. So the liver understanding, because I've traveled the world and I've worked with indigenous healers from different aspects, but the emotion of anger and, you know, anger and hate that comes from liver and hormones are detoxified from through the liver and the liver is a filtering organ. And so it we have overload of toxins, impaired phase one and phase two detoxification, you can experience this anger too. So it's like the perfect storm in her life right now. So from a functional approach, I take as a hormone specialist and functional medicine doctor is, okay, well, we've got to, first of all, eliminate extra toxins. She's getting hormone disruptors. Let's, let's, take a inventory. It's like tidying house, right? Let's, let's clean up our environment. Let's clean up what we're putting on our skin, in our body and, um, and the environment we're exposed to the best of our ability. That's number one. So eliminate the toxic burden. Number two is remove toxic stress, work on compartmentalization, vagal nerve tone, decreasing cortisol. So key to hormone balance. And, um, and the third is supporting detoxification pathway. So supporting detoxification. I use, I use my Mighty Maca Plus part of this, uh, part of my detoxification because I support, it supports phase one and phase two detoxification with liver supporting nutrients and adaptogens and uh, antioxidants to really help support um, hormone detox and decrease inflammation and stabilize blood sugar. I mean, those are key hormone disruptors. So we want to use these nutrients to support us. So, so that's, you know, part of detox. And then four is adaptogenic support to give our body the nutrients it needs. And with that said, like number five is sleep, focusing on good sleep, hydration, movement, thoughts, all of those come into play and in my workup and assessment and plan of an individual, it's a, it would be nice if I could just say, here, take this prescription and, and I'll see you in, in a year. But we want to heal and e exhibit radiance. We have to, we have to address all the, these aspects. You said some very key things that I'd love to expand upon. Now to do these things is going to take two things. Strategy and discipline. Very important. Those two say show up to me and similar to you, Dr. Anna Kabeca, that just want to show up and pay you money and fix the problem. It's really actually almost every single step that we take throughout our day can either lead to balancing our hormones or not balancing our hormones. And I'm so glad that you mentioned sleep and we make serotonin throughout the day. It makes us feel uplifted and happy. And then it gets converted to melatonin, which helps us sleep. And if we have enough of those being made, serotonin is tied to the gut. 
And then in the brain, it goes from serotonin to melatonin. So when you're waking up feeling rested and happy, that's a good sign that those hormones are in check. And then there's cortisol. And cortisol tends to spike when adrenaline spikes. So say, for example, there's a problem, a conflict, you have to solve it. For me, looking back on all the cold therapy that I did, I was toning my vagus nerve and actually really honing in on not not responding through adrenaline and cortisol spikes, but actually noradrenaline, which allows us to have a more focused, concise, eyes on the target ability to navigate things. So cold therapy, I know it's like that free, easy thing. If you're not doing it, do it. Cold shower in the AM, cold plunge in the ocean if it's cold enough where you live or in your backyard. This is so key to tone that vagus nerve in the nervous system. And then thirdly, I would say is really having a mastery over our emotions and identifying how we're feeling. You are an expert in Elena, something. Before you go there, I want to talk more yes. about cold therapy. So, I mean, really cold therapy for Im- improving vagus tone and and for in- converting white fat to brown, more metabolically active brown fat. So you said cold showers. So how long of a cold shower? And I'm in Texas. Our water doesn't get that cold in the summer. So. Yeah. If it doesn't get that cold, then you're going to have to do something like have a, a properly chilled tub where you live, say outside, there's a couple options for that. Or something that's cheap is fill your bathtub up with some cold water and then dump a bunch of ice in it and get in that. And when you know that you've honed your response with noradrenaline versus adrenaline, is you're gonna be able to get in that ice bath and within seconds, you're going to be able to regulate. You're not gonna feel, you're not gonna feel like you're gonna die or hyperventilate. You're going to be able to go into this more relaxed state and you'll know that you've achieved that response. I would say if after a few seconds, you're like, okay, I can do this. I'm safe. (laughs) For how long? How long do you recommend doing that? I would start if it's new to you for about maybe 30 seconds and I can go either, you know, eight minutes up to 13 minutes. I will experience mild hypothermia at that point, but I actually had to do cold therapy for a really bad uh, cervical spine injury after two car crashes. So I literally would have to go all the way up to my neck. And that's gonna be a bit too much for most people. So I would say start with 30 seconds and maybe do up to about three or four minutes. And then in the evening, yin and yang, we wanna balance the masculine and feminine. We live in a world of duality. In the evening, have your warm bath, do your sauna session so that you, you're balancing the hot and cold response. Uh, do you have any other questions or anything to add to that? No, no. I think though, too, like after you do that hot bath in the evening, do you then get into a cold shower or do a cold rinse off because cold can help you sleep better before bed? I actually prefer to do cold in the a.m. and then warm in the p.m. And I do track my sleep. And it's pretty easy for me to get anywhere from mid 80s to high 90s sleep scores when I do that and sleep in EMF protective clothing, which yes, I'm wearing under my beautiful white, gorgeous dress here today. And, you know, magnesium, antioxidants, have some frequency stuff in the room, red light therapy, that really two hours before bed is, is chill time for restorative sleep, doing your skincare. Um, that's basically the part, the big parts of the routine that I do, but I like to do the warm in the PM because I like going to bed feeling clean and warm and cozy. That just feels good to me, but we're all different. And when you track your sleep, you can actually see what's making a difference. Now the question that I was going to dive into, but I'm so glad that you asked that to clarify for everybody tuning in here is you are an expert. It's something that is phenomenal. And actually, I employed with my dear mother because her dear sister, God bless her, is just in a high adrenaline cortisol state. So oxyplay to help balance that, get that oxytocin up, that bonding hormone up to make us feel better and more relaxed. 
tell us what you mean by OxyPlay and actually how simple and free it is and it's going to make your life better. Yeah, OxyPlay, I use that to say we need OxyPlay every day to keep the doctor away. It's better than an apple, right? And that means increasing oxytocin, the hormone of love, bonding, and connection. So oxytocin, different than oxycodone, the pain medicine that got a lot of bad rap. But oxytocin, which is a hormone of love, connection, we... Um, we secreted in abundance during orgasm, during intimacy and play, during laughter, during doing things that we enjoy doing with people we enjoy doing them with, playing with a pet, getting out in nature and everything, anything we can do to increase oxytocin helps regulate cortisol. So they're always at odds with each other. Cortisol being our stress hormone and oxytocin being the hormone of regeneration, life, the hormone, you know, that's worth living for, right? So this is the life-giving hormone oxytocin. In childbirth, we secrete an abundant amount of oxytocin to deliver our baby. And it's sometimes IV, if we're, you know, as an OB, we would give pitocin, which is oxytocin. And then hormonally, you feel like, oh my God, this great love, this great inner peace, this great joy from the hormone oxytocin. And so, and it's also an imprinting hormone. It bonds you, it bonds you to others um, that you're secreting oxytocin with. So it's powerful. And oxytocin for me is one of the you know things I've used to help heal myself through post-traumatic stress and trauma and grief. And I work with in patients also, for um, depression and trauma and uh, chronic stress issues to really empower oxytocin. But in general, in life, that's what, you know, again, like Rachel said, you said you know, oxytocin is, is free. I mean, it really is free. You don't need a prescription for it. Our body makes it. And the nice thing about oxytocin, the more we make, the more we continue to make. So it's not one of those hormones that you, you make so much and then it shuts down the production. Now we continue, it continues to uh, increase as, as we make it. So doing things we love with people we love doing them with, things that bring a smile to our face increases oxytocin. Yeah, thank you for that. Essentially, if you're not feeling great, if you're feeling all down and out, you're just like, oh, woe is the world, all this stuff coming to an end, that's actually a sign some of your other hormones are out of balance when you're feeling this way. And, you know, I'll be the first to tell you that looking back on my life and my responses to things were related to hormones and just the people I was around and different situations. Once you understand, you have an awareness of how people around you can impact your hormones. I'll give you an example. I was sitting at the dinner table because my mother's sister is visiting and I knew that she was just jacked on adrenaline and cortisol. So I sat next to her at the table and my heart actually started pounding. It was the strangest feeling. I've never felt really that from someone else. I feel like I have when I've connected with like a client, for example, and they're really intense and kind of lost my breath. Now I have an awareness of what that was from. It was I was kind of picking up on their hormones. We give off pheromones. That's, that's very well known. And so what I suggested to my mom was, hey, why don't you and your sister cuddle up and watch a movie because physical touch is such a gift. Cuddling, hugging, hugging to the point where you feel the warmth, that warmth exchange, you know, soothing on the shoulder. That's how we console someone. We rub their shoulder. We, we hold their upper back for them. We soothe them with physical touch. This is almost like an innate mechanism to help each other feel better. However, there is, this comes with a warning. In relationships, you mentioned being single and dating and, okay, here's the announcement. I'm actually single myself. And one of the things I'm going to be really careful of in entering a new relationship is physical touch prematurely because for women, our oxytocin elevation could potentially give a false sense of sort of an... Um, an overview of a relationship. So that's actually, it's a thing that women, if they get intimate too soon, they fall in love faster. And for men, 
it's very much they fall in love through the emotional things, the emotional side of things, because they get uh, when they get to do things for you, say, for example, they're getting a little boost of their testosterone and being in leadership. This stuff is so interesting. Dr. Anna Kabeca, I'm really curious how few people do you think actually have an awareness that hormones are literally responsible for how we feel throughout our lives? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. I mean, it just hormones drives our physiology, our physiology drives our behavior, that's our emotions and re reactions and responsiveness. I want to circle back to what you were saying about, you know, delaying intimacy. And I think that it is so important. I mean, really the whole courting process, you don't want to, you don't want to go from step one to 10 in 30 seconds, right? Like think of, you know, um, getting to know someone and 10 really getting to know someone, right? So there's like 10 steps in between. So sometimes we rush that. And then all of a sudden we think, oh my gosh, this person, so say for example, you, you're you like, oh gosh, you know, I this my mechanic is super sexy. I'm gonna have a fling with him and just leave it out of fling, right? And all of a sudden, then you're like, oh, my God, I, I think I can make a relationship work with him. I mean, we can do this. We can have a relationship. I can navigate my life and, you know, whatever. And we'll have this great relationship. You start thinking that way and you realize, wait, hold on a second. I mean, you have to realize that oxytocin is playing a big role there, especially if you had great sex, great orgasm, lots of oxytocin. It's imprinting. It's, you know, connecting us. And physiologically, we've been desi designed, evolved to do this. And ideally from oxytocin uh, coinciding with ovulation, an increased amount of oxytocin is produced by the corpus luteum in the second half of our menstrual cycle. And so it bonds us. Are we pregnant? Are we not pregnant? Are we having this man's baby? Do we need to stay together and in relationship to support this child now? So there's an evolutionary reason for it. So in modern day, we don't think that way, but it's so important that, you know, modern day thoughts Fine, but your physiology has its own mind. So your physiology really recognizing that um, capacity of oxytocin to maybe imprint you to someone you're not um, ideal for. And I use the description of a mechanic because my ex-husband was a mechanic. So <laughs> among other things. So um, it was great, you know, like great. And so um, you have to you think through these these connections that we have. And, and I, got, you know, I have four daughters, Rachel. So my daughters are ages 16 to 36. As of this month, the uh, oldest is 36 years old. And so it's like, take your time, take your time, don't rush a, a relationship, don't um, recognize the power of physiology in connecting to someone prematurely. But you, you know, the mind and heart need to work together. So my, that's my two cents on that. Beautiful. And actually, funnily enough, abstinence has a component of hormone balancing to it in and of itself. And we forget that. And the other thing that we tend to forget about is that uh, I don't want to trigger any of you, but master manipulators know this about women. They know that if they initiate physical contact very soon, it's going to establish that bond, which with the wrong person can be a trauma bond. And so just saying that so that you have an awareness, you may not have ever heard this before. And Often I just, known as love bombing too. The love bombing. Yeah. Jeez, yeah. 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 Oh yeah, definitely. In in the membership, I talk a lot about psychological and energetic protection because for beautiful women like us, we're highly empathic. We're very nurturing. We're natural caregivers. We're here to be of service. And that, that kind of can put a target on our back. And so what I like to do is just have an awareness of some of the hormones that other people give off that can be a result of that kind of behavior. And how to detect that and then you know make your exit kind of situation in professional life in business life now, these tactics communication negotiation navigation reading people are really key life tools to 
protect us and give us a sense of security and peace and, and also strategy because we're very beautiful, special individuals here who have a lot to give. Just make sure you don't give it to the wrong person. So the person that I do give it to, they're going to be worthy and they're going to be fantastic. They already are. I have a question for you and then uh, we're going to be wrapping up shortly here. The most in one of the key things that you talk about is not just taking care of the face, you know, the high real estate area, face, neck, chest, hands, arms, upper body that we see, but caring for our delicate, beautiful skin down there. That's responsible for giving life. It's responsible for giving pleasure, but we forget to give ourselves a little love down there of the skin too. And I know you have some incredible products to support women with dryness and things like that. So I'd love for you to share what the importance is of actually doing skincare down there, which I'm a huge fan of to rejuvenate. And, you know, some of the products that you have and how they can be supportive. Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, I created these products through my own journey and then working with thousands of patients as a gynecologist, but also, you know, from my own experience with early menopause diagnosed at 39, which I was able to reverse, hair loss, stress-induced hair loss, and all those changes, rapid aging, pre-diabetic ones, all those things. And so understanding too, with the early menopause, how that affect physical intimacy, and also structure and function. So incontinence issues. And, and we think of, you know, we focus, and I had a med spa right when I had my Georgia practice for a long time. And so we focus on in the external, but can't focus, like I said, radiance is health. And so a healthy body radiates beautiful energy and, and joy, and that's reflected back at you. So uh, internal health to get external health, but we did, you know, uh, laser, Botox, fillers, all of that way back. And I, and I haven't done anything personally since no fillers, Botox in now, um, 10 years, but I was doing it a lot at the time for patients and, and as well for myself and, and that, you know, recognize that we were paying attention to the neck up essentially, or chest up or even, you know, waist up, right? But waist down, we weren't paying any attention to. And the things that affect our quality of life more than laugh lines or smile lines is, you know, a loss of sensation, loss of circulation to the vagina causing dryness and infections like the fishy odor, et cetera, changes to the pH, shrinkage of the clitoris, loss of nerve supply to the clitoris, which is a pleasure zone with over 9,000 nerve endings in the clitoris itself. So it has more nerve endings than the tip of our finger and, um, and, and issues with um, anal fissures or hemorrhoids that women struggle with and incontinence. So incontinence is a huge issue for women, especially post childbearing years. It's estimated that over 75% of women over 60 years old experience incontinence. And so we don't want to live with those things. We have to take care of waist down as well as we're taking care of waist up. And, if, and quality of life issues, even more importantly. So as I had experienced, I had four big babies that I gave birth to, and then early menopause at 39, and then I'm doing a P90X class and completely wet myself in my light gray um, exercise sweats at that time. It was just humiliating. I was like, wait, you know, I'm a gynecologist. I got to fix this. And I didn't want surgery for my, I don't want surgery down there. So I really started working with hormones and fine tuning hormones, as well as I was doing that for my patients, pre-operative for urinary tract infections, et cetera, as well as working with vaginal hormones for sexual health and intimacy and increasing pleasure, no matter, you know, no matter how old we are. And so through that experience, I started customizing, comp writing compounded prescriptions and customizing my patients' prescriptions. And then I retired my practice in 2014. And my patients were like, Dr. Anna, no one will write us your creams and gels and lotions and potions. And so I promised my patients that I would come up with something better than I could write on a prescription pad that you don't need a prescription for. And that's where I created my product, Jolva. 
which has a plant stem cells from the alpine rose, which are very regenerative, and DHEA and other emollient ingredients to help drive these ingredients deep into the tissue. And I mean, we have, you know, thousands, thousands of testimonials to, to read the, the benefit of that, but really to reverse the hands of time to improve sensitivity, orgasm, sensation, your natural moisture versus it's not a moisturizer. It really helps enhance your natural moisture as well as improving bladder leaks and incontinent symptoms, as well as hemorrhoids. Again, clitoris to anus, it's the most important real estate on our body to, you know, from a functional perspective. So you want to take care of that and say, you know, I created a lip formula because I was using the Jolva that I designed for our lower lips on my upper lips to reduce lipstick bleed lines, you know, from my and I love to wear red lipstick and I would have these lipstick leads. So I just started using my Jolva on my lips and then I created an ointment. So I call, I say at the girlfriend doctor, we take care of your lips above and below the hips. <laughs> so a little humor, but that that's my kiss formula and my Jolva, which is my, you know, again, I, I part of the foundations that I recommend for women in helping support healthy, um, healthy tissues. Fantastic. And I think that's incredible that you've done that. You've created these products because you and I are very well connected in the health and wellness space and are really up to speed with ingredients we want to avoid and ingredients and things that are great for us. Um, so I think it's great that uh, for everyone listening, a trusted colleague of mine is making great products and you've sent me some of yours and, you know, I I weave in your detox formula with my sauna sessions to help open up those pathways. And it's just important for everybody listening to know that, yes, I use Dr. Annika Beckett's products and uh, really endorse what you're doing. And we were going to talk about fasting and our week-long fast experience and how exciting that is. However, I think that there's so much information here to, you know, for everybody tuning in to kind of sit with and integrate, maybe jump back to, to, we covered some really key high level concepts. And I, I would like to actually have you back on the show and do a part two, because I feel like there's some overlaps with you and I, with what we've been through, heartbreak, hormones, life upheaval, life is life, everybody. If the boat's sinking, and the one you're in, you got to get off and get a new one. And sometimes this stuff happens. And uh, I think that that's going to be a really good one to keep up the positivity, especially when life happens, because these are really easy things that we can do, like a long fast to help ourselves feel better and give our whole mind, body, spirit, energy a reset. One of the things I'd like to say in closing here about you, Dr. Anna Kabeca, is we had a chance to connect not too long ago and, you know, it was at this health entrepreneur event and we're all dressed up in our fancy dress and you just looked incredible. You just look like this Amazonian mega babe goddess. So for those of you who have seen Dr. Anna Kabeca online in real person, she's even better and definitely a woman who I would say has a high level of radiance, high level of empathy, here to be of service. So it's great to kind of support people like Dr. Anna Kabeca and herself with the products and services that we offer. So head on over to Dr. Anna, D R A N N A dot com forward slash radiance. And that's going to give you a special promo on the beautiful products that she offers. And for a lot of this information that you're going to be hearing me drip into this, the show, I go much deeper in my membership over at the school of radiance.com. This is kind of the stuff that I do behind the scenes that I'm just not comfortable talking about publicly, but that have really helped me. And I know will help you too with stepping into your radiance. And I've had kind of this radiance 2.0 situation happen recently where I actually look totally different in the videos I had in the membership a year ago. Um, I don't even recognize myself anymore. There's been another beautiful shift and more than happy to share with those who are disciplined, make the commitment and know that they are worth it to learn these strategies to move through life in a beautiful, healthy, radiant way.
and serve yourself and others in the process. Thank you so much, Dr. Anna Quebec, for joining us here on the School of Radiance podcast. And I trust you all have a beautiful, high vibe, radiant rest of your day. And I will see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.